to identify the name of the chemical. That name has to be trackable back to the material safety data sheet. So for instance, now I can take a Sharpie out and I can write right on that spray bottle the name of the product. What if I wrote toilet bowl cleaner? Is that, is that appropriate? You have to ask yourself, could you go into your MSDS binder or online, whatever the case might be, could you find an MSDS for toilet bowl cleaner? And you could, well you could, but there would be hundreds of them. What you need is the, the actual name, Sandy Fresh, Tidy Bowl, Simple Green, you know, whatever, whatever that uh, product is named. So put the name of the product. Most of us are doing a good job of this. We're forgetting the next part. We've got to put the, the hazard warning underneath the name. So, for instance, a hazard warning might be harmful if swallowed, flammable, irritant, those types of things. We can use words like flammable. We can use pictures or symbols like a skull and crossbones or, you know, things like that. The NFPA diamond system. Some of you are, are probably using that system. They're, they're all, absolutely, those are fine ways to communicate uh, to the employees. Now, if you're using anything besides words, if you're using pictures or symbols, you've got to make sure that you're training your employees to understand what those symbols mean. And that makes sense. Um, if, you're using, if you're using words, and we're going to assume it's in English, what about the, the Spanish-speaking employees or the French Creole or the Polish employees who don't read English? You, you have to make... Um, uh, concessions for those folks, you've got to make sure they are able to uh, understand what the hazards are in those chemicals. So let's talk about the overall program. To comply with this, either the old HAZCOM standard or the new GHS, we've got to have a written plan. As I mentioned a bit earlier, we've provided you with a Word document that, I don't know, I think it's 10 or 12 pages long. It, it's pretty extensive, but it covers what's required by OSHA from a written plan standpoint. Now what you're going to do, and we've highlighted things in red, you're going to go in and put your specific company information and, and some of your procedures and, and things like that in there. But we've given you this template to work with, so you can you should be able to check that one off. The chemical inventory is the um, document that I just showed you that goes in front of your binder. And if, if you need a copy of that, email me at the end, and I'll get that out to you. Labels and warnings we're going to talk about. We, just, we talked about the secondary container labels, but we're going to get more into this new labeling system. Training as well. We've, uh, we've given you a document to download to train your employees downstream. And then the MSDS documents. I, I made a point, though, saying that the MSDS are now known as SDS, Safety Data Sheet. 